Today we're going to be talking about the cell membrane, but we're also going to get into the transport. That's going to be the main focus of this uh, little screencast for you today. Uh, so the cellular membrane, well, if you remember from organelles, I suggest if you didn't learn about the organelles yet, you do. Um, this it looks like the skin, but it actually has a more specific function, and that's going to be to regulate what comes in and out of the cell. This is made of a phospholipid bilayer, as you can see here. Phospholipid is that little head with two little tails on it. You have the hydrophobic nonpolar tails. So this thing does not like water. These tails in here do not like water. And we have the hydrophilic, water-loving polar heads. These things like water. Um, so cohesion is what's going to make those polar heads attract to the water. So that's why they get that little fluid-like shape or, you know, that little, like, uniform shape where it's facing down and facing up. It's going to be facing the water. Um, some extra parts of the cell membrane. First, you got proteins. Um, these are going to help particles move across the membrane. You got channel, peripheral, integral. You got so many proteins. The goal of it is to transport something that's too large, charged, something, anything that can't go um, diffuse ac across the membrane easily. We're going to need um, those proteins to help. Um, carbs are going to act as identification tags, and cholesterol is going to anchor that membrane down. Semi-permeability in the cellular membrane. What is permeability? Well, it's, the me it's a measurement of the ability for things to allow particles to pass through it. So some particles can pass through, others cannot. That means semi-permeable. Some things can pass through, others cannot. And in this diagram here, you can kind of see... Um, that example, you can, you're going to have high permeability here because you have a lot of cracks of water in this example. Water is going to be able to go through here very fast, but low permeability, you see so tightly packed, basically no water is getting through there. Um, so we have cell transport next. Um, if molecules are not evenly spread out, they will do so. That's called diffusion. Um, concentration refers to the amount of a particle in a solution. So if you have a high concentration, you have a lot of particles. If you have a low concentration, you have a low amount of particles. Um, the movement is high to low. It's called a gradient. So in this little um, can here, you know, you ever spray like an, spray like an aerosol can for breeze? Um, you're going to notice it's going to start very, very tightly packed. It's going to spread out. That's diffusion basically in a good visual um, way to show you guys. So we're gonna start with passive transport first. There's two types, there's passive and active. First we have passive. This is high to low and does not need energy. And there's three kinds. We have simple, facilitated, and osmosis. Your first one, passive. This is movement of small particles across the membrane. No help is needed by, say, the proteins that we talked about earlier, which is actually how we get to facilitated transport. If you have larger or charged particles, you need a protein because it's not going to be able to pass through the membrane easily. Um, so the, we have a channel and we have a carrier. The channel is just, think about it, just a channel, like a canal, and they're going to go through there. You have a carrier protein, which is kind of going to wrap around your molecule, and it's going to help it go down. And lastly, um, our third way of passive transport is osmosis. And this is a heavy topic on itself. I'm, I'm gonna actually make another video on osmosis and how to just, just gonna really solidify it for you guys. Um, but it's water across the membrane moving high to low. So water is gonna move where the solute goes. And I highly recommend you do check out my osmosis video. This is just the basics for now. Osmosis is something that you could spend a whole day on in a classroom on. It's that important to understand. Hypertonic means there's a lot of solute on the outside, and that's going to cause your cell to shrink. You have isotonic, which is a balanced state of water coming in and out of the cell. You have hypotonic, that means there's a lot of solute inside the cell, so water is going to follow. Now we have active transport. This is movement from low to high or moving against that concentration gradient. ATP slash energy in general is required here. Um, so proteins will act as pumps here. We also have vesicles, but we'll get to that in a second. Actually, we have it right here. It's called bulk transport. And this is using your vesicles. Um, 
so you can use a bundle of particles bulk or you can use very large particles and an exocytosis is going to be inside the cell we're going to be transporting it out so let's say we have a lot of a lot of just something and we just want to get it out of the cell we're going to do exocytosis if we want to bring something in the cell and it's too big we're going to do endocytosis and that's going to be it guys if you guys did enjoy please like or subscribe comment maybe if you have any criticism thank you guys for watching have a good one bye bye